The historian and political commentator Bernard Lewis died 10 days ago at the ripe old age of 101. An intelligent fellow, insightful, interesting. Certainly didn't agree with everything he had to say, but his world view is comprehensible. I'm going to lay out a few of his quotes here. If you've never heard of the man, perhaps this will make you want to do some research of your own. So, here we go. To a Western observer, schooled in the theory and practice of Western freedom, it is precisely the lack of freedom, freedom of the mind from constraint and indoctrination, to question and inquire and speak, freedom of the economy from corrupt and pervasive mismanagement, freedom of women from male oppression, freedom of citizens from tyranny, that underlies so many of the troubles of the Muslim world. But the road to democracy, as the Western experience amply demonstrates, is long and hard, full of pitfalls and obstacles. That was from a book called What Went Wrong? The Clash Between Islam and Modernity in the Middle East. In a more recent work, Notes on a Century Reflections of a Middle East Historian, Bernard said, Those who are unwilling to confront the past will be unable to understand the present and unfit to face the future. Well, that can apply to any of us, wherever in the world we are. And you can apply that to your personal affairs or the political world. Yeah. Bernard again. It is often said that Islam is an egalitarian religion. There is much truth in this assertion. If we compare Islam at the time of its advent with the societies that surrounded it, the stratified feudalism of Iran, and the caste system of India to the east, the privileged aristocracies of both Byzantine and Latin Europe to the west, the Islamic dispensation does indeed bring the message of equality. Not only does Islam not endorse such a system of social differentiation, it explicitly and resolutely rejects them. The actions and utterances of the Prophet, the honoured precedents of the early rulers of Islam, as preserved by tradition, are overwhelmingly against privilege by descent, by birth, by status, by wealth, or even by race, and insist that rank and honour are determined only by piety and merit in Islam. And again, Mr. Lewis, the medieval Islamic world offered vastly more freedom than any of its predecessors, its contemporaries, and most of its successors, unquote. I'll have to plead ignorance on that one, not being a scholar of the Islamic world. I'll finish with a change of subject quote. Yeah, this one regarding Israel. If the conflict is about the size of Israel, then long and difficult negotiations can eventually resolve the problem. But if the conflict is about the existence of Israel, then serious negotiation is impossible, unquote. And I entirely do agree with that. Extremists and fanatics, their faces don't fit at the grown-ups table, as far as I'm concerned. People in positions of power who want to wipe out populations, kill or exile millions, they are not the allies of a possible future peace accord. Statement of the obvious award for today goes to yours truly. On that note, please rate, comment and subscribe. Tell me you love me, maybe I'll do the same. And I will see you next week, folks.
Peace.